Good evening and welcome to worship on this Thanksgiving Eve. Even without any particular blessing from God, we would still owe our Creator complete and full obedience, simply because He is the Almighty Creator and we are His creation. But He doesn't leave us without blessing. He loved us before the world began, and once sin entered the world, He promised and then fulfilled salvation through Jesus Christ. And he did so for every sinner. He sends his Holy Spirit to bring sinners to faith, and then to strengthen us and equip us to make our way through this earthly pilgrimage. In addition to all of that, he daily and richly provides for our earthly needs, food and clothing, shelter, and all beyond our basic needs and subsistence. So in view of all of these blessings from God, we have every reason to be continually thankful without grumbling, without complaint. And yet we do find lack of contentment. We grow weary of the riches of God's grace for both body and soul. In view of God's rich blessings, we have every reason to honor Him and to show our love for Him by keeping His commandments. And yet we sin, not only with a lack of gratitude and thanksgiving, but in many other ways as well. So I ask you, is it your confession that you have sinned against God in thought, word, and deed, by what you have done and by what you have left undone, and even in ways you never recognized or have since forgotten? Do you repent of these sins and purpose with the aid of the Holy Ghost to amend your sinful life? If so, answer, I do confess my sins and repent. By the mercy of God, you and I are redeemed. Christ Jesus has removed our guilt forever. His mercies continue new to you each morning, and in Him you have the joy of forgiveness and salvation. With thanksgiving, worship the Lord. Go forth and sin no more. Amen. Let us rise and pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, Your mercies are new to us every morning. It is good to give thanks to you and sing praises to your name, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night. For you, O Lord, have made us glad by your work. Although we have in no way deserved your goodness, you have abundantly provided for all our wants of body and soul. Give us, we ask of you, your Holy Spirit, so that we may genuinely recognize your merciful goodness toward us, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and rules with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Word of God for our Thanksgiving meditation this evening is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 5 verses 15 through 21. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us, and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Look carefully, then, how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is, And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. So far the word. In the name of the Lord our God, from whom every good and perfect gift comes, dear fellow redeemed. Don't pull that. That was my mother's counsel as I was tugging on a strand of string coming from a shirt. While I listened at that time, a little bit later I did not because that string was just a little too irresistible. So pull I did and unraveled 
line after line of the weaving in that particular garment. Jesus and his work of redemption is the center of all of Scripture and the focus of everything, both Old and New Testament. But the thread that winds throughout is that of thanksgiving. And without thanksgiving, the whole thing unravels. Thanksgiving to God who provides every gift is inseparably tied to the work of Jesus and every blessing that comes to us from God's grace. The words we've just read from Ephesians come in the context of the Apostle Paul encouraging the Ephesian Christians to walk in connection with love. He's encouraging them in their day-to-day -day life as they inter interact with one another, as well as those outside the family of God. And we heard the instruction, but then it comes to giving thanks always for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Giving thanks always because God's mercy and grace are always there. His wisdom and his power is put into use for your blessing always. So no matter how things look to us, no matter what the earthly circumstance may be, there is always thanks to give to God, whose mercies are new, whose grace sent us his Son, and who has accomplished salvation for our sin-ridden souls. In everything, give thanks. God says that he works all things out for good to those who are the called according to his purpose. Any given moment, any particular hardship may not be something that of itself we would be thankful for. Not thankful to be sick exactly, not thankful to have a broken bone. But in the larger context, in connection with all of that, still able to give thanks. Because we know that it didn't happen without God's knowledge. And we won't have to go forward without God's help, strength. And healing. Giving thanks always in everything to God the Father, because every good and perfect gift comes from Him and only Him. The Apostle echoes this same uh, truth in 1 Thessalonians Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. It is the will of God to abound in thanksgiving, because there is always reason to give thanks to him who gives all. Again, in Colossians, Paul writes, Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Ultimately, if there is a lack of thanks, it's either from ignorance of the blessings of God, or not understanding the need for those blessings, or else a stubborn unbelief refusing to give God any glory and honor. For how could a sinner, for example, who understands the depth of his sin and what God says about that sin, not have, have thanksgiving and gratitude to know that those sins are washed away and that all that is necessary for salvation has been done? Or someone living through this life, having what is necessary, understanding that God gives and takes away according to his will, how can there not be gratitude and thanksgiving, knowing that the God of heaven and earth is controlling those things according to his wisdom and will? And so we find throughout scripture the thread of thanksgiving, and where there's a lack of thanksgiving, it is part of what God equates with unbelief, or at the very minimum with our sinful flesh. In Romans 1, Paul writes, Though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him. But they became futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened. And Paul writing to Timothy and giving a list of the kinds of attitudes that will be present in these last days includes ungratefulness as one of the benchmarks of that wickedness. Thanksgiving, always and in everything, goes beyond just that thankfulness. It also spills out in what we do and how we live. And so Paul writes to the Ephesians, Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking, which are out of place. But instead, let there be thanksgiving. Ponder that. The opposite and the contrast that Paul says, no filthiness, no foolish talk, no crude joking. Instead, by contrast, let there be thanksgiving. 
Those kinds of things, those kinds of behaviors don't go together with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving obliterates that foolishness because thanksgiving is filled with gratitude to God. We enter into our prayer life also with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving itself being a prayer of thanks to God. But as we go to God asking for the things that we need, Paul says, in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And to the Colossians, he says, continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. Tonight, we seek to be encouraged by God and his word to be thankful always and in all circumstances. Throughout the rest of the service, we will hear voices of thanks from faithful believers in scripture who can confess and express their thanksgiving in the very same kinds of circumstances in which we find ourselves. The details aren't always the same, but ultimately, they were just like you and me. They were sinners, weak, frail, in need of help. They were sinners who day by day had every reason to keep on giving thanks in everything and did so as God blessed them and prospered them in those various circumstances. Voices of thanks from God's word to encourage us in our thanksgiving. We continue with our first hymn, Now Thank We All Our God. First voice of thanksgiving to which we give ear is that of King Solomon. His words were spoken at the dedication of the temple, and they are words of thanksgiving to God for his faithful providence. From 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and 1 Kings chapter 8. As soon as Solomon finished his prayer, fire 